Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. And I know, listen, the more we talk about God's word, the more we give the Holy Spirit the avenue or the opportunity to manifest His word. And now we're talking about the spirit of boldness. Guess what's going to happen? And, and it's already happening to, to some of you. As you hear, faith is stirred up in your heart. Now, when that faith is stirred up in your heart, guess what happens? The spirit of boldness comes upon you. Okay? So, it doesn't just come upon you for coming sick. Now, some of you will experience this when you face different kinds of situations. And suddenly there will be a boldness in you to face that situation. That's why I'm spending time to teach on this. Because if, if you have zeal without understanding, you may twist that zeal in the wrong direction. So teaching of God's word is so important so that when the, when the anointing comes upon you, you will know where to face. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Say, Father, I demand from you right now my daily bread. And I receive it from your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You remember our team scripture, Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness, I love that statement, all boldness, grant unto your servants, Lord, that with all boldness, they may speak thy word. I was telling you about Nigeria. The word of God has not been uh, uh, opposed yet. Nationally. Because we, we, we still do our thing in our different localities or different churches. And very few places that you have, you're facing those kind of hindrances. Now I'm not talking about when you break the law and then they come to demolish your church. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a place of clear persecution where you are being restricted from preaching the good news. Okay? Now, I'm not even talking about those who are overzealous and, and thinking they are preaching the gospel, but they are preaching something else. See, if you're being persecuted for truth, then you know, I've been saying this and saying this, what are you standing on? Who sent you? If that is not clear, then you will be killed or you will be destroyed. See, God is not obligated to fund what He did not, what did not originate from Him. Please make no mistakes about that. It is His word that He sends first. And you see that word, whatsoever is born of God, that's whatsoever is born of the word of God, overcomes the world. But then if God have not baited that thing, then you have nothing you're holding on to. And that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. I always emphasize to, to, uh, on these guys, they have heard and received command from the Lord to go preach. Now, the, 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 the elders were telling them not to preach in the name of Jesus again. So the question then is, who will they obey? Who will they disobey? They chose to obey the Lord. Now, because they chose to obey the Lord, they went before the Lord and said, this is what we want you to do for sake. That's one thing about believers that... Uh, they don't know how to allow me to use the word bargain. Bargain simply means take advantage of the situation and get something good for yourself. Sometimes we find believers, and, and that's why many people are giving up. Old believers have been there for so long, you find them giving up at some stage. 
or at some point in their lives. Some were real believers when they were younger, as they began to get older, began to handle responsibilities in life, they gave up their faith. Why? Because they, do, they did not know how to negotiate life. They didn't know. Oh, you see a believer, a believing sister gets married and then thinking, oh, this brother is, is, is a good brother, this brother is godly. Then you get married and you discover that this guy is far from godly. What do you do? Walk out of the marriage or fight to win. Now, if you want to fight to win, there are many things you will have to subject yourself under. Yes. But then here is the point, and this is where a lot of people make mistakes. Okay, the Bible says I should not talk back. The Bible says I should honor my husband. If you're the wife now, the Bible says I should honor my husband. The Bible says I should uh, um, submit to my husband. Okay, then people begin to argue, and that's when the husband is loving the wife. You, you. Why not doing anything about it? Oh, the Bible says I should submit to my husband. Okay, you're submitting to your husband. Do you know why the Bible says, or God said, you should submit to your husband? Do you know why? Number one. Number two, do you understand the benefits of submitting to your husband? That's number two now. Number three, do you understand the benefits of obeying God? even when you don't feel like it. If you don't understand these three things, you may end up losing your life, thinking that you're obeying God. So I want to take this action. I know I can take this other action, but because of Christ, I'm taking this action. Why does Christ want me to take that action? So that there will be peace? What do you define as peace? Me not fighting and the other person keeps misbehaving? Is that what you define as peace? That's no peace. Oh. That's no peace. So when I am teaching you this now, and because it has to do with boldness, because to believe God requires boldness. So, for me to accept this, in quotes, nonsense, why? God says he has not called us to strive. Okay. So I'm not supposed to get into strife. Yes. So what should I do? That's what his disciples did. Father, behold what is threatening my marriage. But first and foremost, do you know what you were supposed to be doing to keep that marriage running? Do you know? It's not just about, I'm a good wife, or I have not cheated on my husband, or I've not cheated on my wife. Or I'm not. No, it's not enough. A lot of marriages are failing Allow me to get into this, this, this place now. A lot of marriages are failing because there is no vision. None. Oh, Pastor, what do you mean there is no vision? What has God told you? What did God tell you when you were getting married? What did, what did you see? Not fantasies now. What did you hear from the Lord concerning your marriage? Not general marriage. What did you hear from the Lord concerning your marriage? What word are you holding on to? Now you see, because there is nothing you're holding on to, at the slightest opportunity, you're ready to pack up and let it go. But when you have heard and seen, this is the reason we tell couples, when you are cutting, spend more time to pray. Stop going around buying ice cream. You will do that for the rest of your life. Now, before you enter, 
Pray. 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 In the place of prayer, you will see all the challenges that will face you. Oh, yes. In the face of prayer, you will see the partner you're getting married to clearly. You will see the strength. You will see the weakness. You will see. Not only will you see, you will receive ability and wisdom on how to tackle them. The fact that God is telling you, that's your husband, that's your wife, doesn't mean the person will be perfect. But if you will pray, if you will be in the place of prayer, the Lord will open your eyes to see that person, the true state of that person. Then if it's something he has ordained, he will tell you, this is how to manage it. This is how to manage it. Now, when you have that in your heart, you're not saying challenge, God. What would you do? You will go into your closet. And Father, behold what is threatening my marriage. Aha. Uh -huh. Now you know what you're fighting for. You're not fighting for the man. You're not fighting for your children. Someone say, and the reason I'm staying is because of my children. The wrong reason. It's not valid. Oh, it's not valid. Because those children can grow up and curse you and tell you, Mommy, why didn't you leave? Say, because of us. Now look at you. You're not even enjoying us. It's not valid. I would have gone, no, but because of the children. No, sir. No, ma. Find a good reason. Find a good reason. And if I go, where will I start from? If you, you will suffer, I'm telling you the truth. If you are staying, the only thing that will make you stay and fight for your marriage is if you have received the vision. So if you have not received the vision for your marriage, go, go look for it now. Ah, Pastor, so how do I get it? Prayer. 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 My father, why did you put us together? Why are you putting us together if you are not married yet? Why did you put us together if you are already married? It's not too late. It's not too late. Lord, I'm in this thing already. What is your vision here? What is the vision? What, what, what do you, what, what are you, why did you bring us together? Pray, pray, pray. I'm not just there, Father. I want to know from you, why did you bring us together? This will require, now this is your life. This will require long prayer. Kaya Badus. And Akatobara. You will add fasting to it. Lord, speak to me concerning my marriage. No, Lord, Lord, speak to me concerning my husband. Uh, 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 uh. That should have happened since before you got married. The moment you got married, you should be listening to the Lord concerning your marriage. Lord, speak to me concerning my marriage. Now, what are you asking for? Give me the vision. Give me the blueprint. When he brings forth the blueprint, then you will see this thing is worth fighting for. And now you will understand your role in the fight. And if you will keep your role, Kayama Nabrene, the Lord whom you please, the Bible says, if a man's way pleases the Lord, he will cause even his enemy to be at peace with him. If a man's ways pleases the Lord, how will your way please the Lord? It's not by saying, I don't want to talk. Who. They are dealing with you. Say, I don't want to talk. Who. They say, don't take your family issues outside. Yes, I, it's because I don't want to take my family issues outside. I'm just trusting God. Trusting God for what? If you don't have the word of God concerning your marriage that you're trusting him for, you can't just sit there and say, I'm trusting my husband, trusting God that he will change my husband. Change him to what? And for what reason? What is the blueprint? What is the vision for your marriage? What is it? Sometimes God can tell you, oh, you're going to raise children that are going to be like this. That's what fighting for. 
now because you're doing your role because you've seen you've seen and when you see that vision you will find your place there is no way god will show you a vision and you will not find your place i said the reason a lot of marriages are destroyed are destroyed the reason a lot of marriages are destroyed today is lack of vision complete lack of vision the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. One translation says the people cast off restraint. They cast off restraint. The thing that would have held them, they threw it away. Say so to hell, what is it? If he can misbehave, me too, I can misbehave. Oh! No vision. That's emotional. And it's emotional because there was never a vision. Now, don't start telling me. You know, people can be funny. Don't start telling me, eh. Pastor John, there was no vision. Since there was no vision, I, eh, so let it just go. I'm not ready to start getting any vision. You are useless in your life. Did the Lord tell you there was no vision? Have you gone to him and he told you there was no vision? You are lazy, not willing to accept from the Lord. Wake up! You just allow Satan, I was counseling with someone and I said, listen, your marriage will either honor the Lord or despise him. He said, God was the one that instituted marriage. He says, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a help me. Okay. The same God said, therefore shall a man leave his mother and father and shall cleave to his wife and they too shall become one flesh. Okay. Now that's the wisdom of God. That's what God said. Now, Man didn't go to God and say, Lord, I'm tired. I'm doing this thing. No, it's not good. Please give me a helping. No, it was God that looked at man and said, I will give you a helping. Okay. Now you are married. Do you see the reason? And then suddenly, you, your marriage is not such that God planned for, such that God declared you just do things anyhow accept whatever comes your way and then look at your life now imagine god looking down and asking himself is this the marriage that i created if it is not satan is using your life to mock god let us sink in your mind Can you wake up from that slumber today? I say, you know what? Forget our differences. Let us stand. You have your enemy. The devil is your enemy. Don't, don't side with him. None of you should side with him. Say, you know what? We may have our differences, but you know what? You see this marriage? This marriage is going to glorify God. I'll put away my differences. You put away your differences. Let's put the, let's put the devil to shame. Let's go before the Lord to open our eyes to see the vision concerning our marriage. What did he set us up for? What did he bring us together for? That's what I want to fulfill. I'll put my emotions away and fulfill that. Now you're talking. I, I pray for you. And, and, and I pray for every marriage that is going through any form of challenge. Father, I ask that you open their understanding to see. See truth. See what is right. And fill them with boldness to stand for that which is true and fulfill it. Satan, take your hand off every marriage that is listening to me right now. Take your hand off off them now and let these marriages glorify the Lord today in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.